Hi, welcome back, Roger, Burke Engine TV. I got the uh, original uh, number one engine that I've received a couple inquiries about, and this uh, I learned about from Lois Bork herself, and she gave me the address of a guy in Long Island, and I called him, I, well, I didn't call him, I jumped on my Suzuki and went down to see him, and uh, across Long Island Sound, and there it was. But the deal was, uh, it was not for sale. So I talked to him about what he thought he would want for it. We agreed on uh, what he would sell it for, and he would call me when he was ready to sell it. 17 years later, in 1999, I got it. It came as you see it. It's got the uh, Bendix Scintilla Magneto. This is the crankcase with the integral case, if you know anything about this stuff. And this is the Vacturi carburetor. This is a lift-type carburetor, they call it. It's known today as a constant velocity, constant vacuum, or a constant depression carburetor. And this is what came with it. This was quite advanced at his time. And Bork, cl Bork claimed that uh, this would give you the correct mixture through the range, although I had uh, a uh, problem with it, and I could not make it run lean enough. I was to find out what that problem was later on after I uh, got into it a little bit more. But I decided to run it after I'd gone through it. I pulled the cylinders, checked the jugs out, looked at the notorious leather rod seals, did not appear to be leaking. And uh, also what I did, uh, because it really needed it, it was uh, electrical, of course. And with electrical, you always want to take a look at what's going on there. And what I wound up doing, oh, forgive the gasket here. You don't want to rip that. You can't find another one. <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, Bendix and Telemagneto. This is the only thing on this thing that is not stock because I had to renew the ignition coils on it. And these, I think, were used as uh, outboard Bendix and Tele. And uh, this definitely is the uh, number 001 engine. It's stamped over here on the back side. No light on it, but anyway, the number, you might be able to see it. And uh, still have the uh, original spark plugs, although I did use new plugs when I ran it. So I did run it, and I was quite happy, and I knew it would kind of be like it was because I'd already been working on the um, proto engine. Um, as far as me modifying it, anything, uh, no, I didn't. I was just happy to make it run, and let's uh, find out a baseline on what a stocker is supposed to be like, and then we'll take it from there. I know he was experimenting because these are carburetor Venturis that he made, and there's several sizes here, and there's one of them in there also. So um, kind of couldn't figure out what they were for at first, but after I began to run it, I began to realize that Russ was experimenting with the, uh, the mixtures too. And uh, he did say this satisfied all of the requirements, uh, but uh, today these carburetors are, you, will never, you just won't find any anywhere. They're replaced with uh, modern day CV carbs, which are very efficient. Although what this really needs is the, uh, is the uh, fuel injection. Originally it was an outboard motor. It's still on the outboard motor base. One of these days I'll find an old Evan Rude mid-50s lower end and uh, see if I could uh, restore it to uh, complete, uh, uh, complete as an outboard motor. But this is how I bought it, and I didn't have much choice because he didn't have a bottom end for it. It had never been on a bottom end. So uh, as far as it was... Um, run according according to him only one time uh it was uh, pretty well carboned up and i figure that uh this needle problem in the carburetor here is what got him see he didn't sell these uh, machines with carburetor you had to go out and find one of these vacturies were probably fairly common at the time and what we needed to be done was the uh carburetor needle uh, I saw a sheet once down in Aiken, South Carolina at another fan's place down there to check out his stuff. And uh, uh, Burke talked about cutting this needle. And unfortunately, I think what they did, they cut it back so far that it fails to uh, seat down. And when it doesn't seat, uh, the reason why I had failure was uh, the mixture control. 
So I decided to park it because it's like owning a right flyer. You wouldn't want to take it out on a Sunday afternoon and knock the wing off it. But it served its purpose to me because I've had it apart and I've compared it with the other two uh, original engines that I have. So right now it's going to go into uh, retirement because I've got other ones to play for uh, with that are not going to cost me uh, as much if there's any kind of damage. Uh, as far as running it is concerned, you just get it going. And uh, right up on the top here is a variable magneto in which it's got four positions. One is stop. One is slow, one is start position, and the other one way over here is uh, speed. And he stopped these engines by retarding to the point where it wouldn't run anymore. Then they did not have a kill button. So I didn't really know if they were in true HCC or not unless I put the kill button in. But at that time, I had already gotten there with the prototype, so I decided to... Uh, to um, leave this one just as it is. So uh, I got all the old original parts and plus a letter of provenance for it too. So it's, uh, it's quite a thing to, uh, to have. Very happy with uh, the condition of all of it after all of these years. Anyway, that's it for today. A snowy day, about 10 degrees outside. So uh, not a run day today. Can't get my door open. So that's it, I guess, for Bork Engine TV. And uh, thank you for stopping in. And I'll try and do more as uh, time allows. Have a good one. Bye-bye.